Hello, welcome. I filmed a video the other day about all of the palettes in 2021 that tempted me but I didn't buy for whichever reason and I kind of framed it as like why I'm happy I didn't buy them. I'll link that video down below that should have gone up maybe a couple days or a week before this one's going up. But today is kind of like the companion video where I'm going to be talking about all of the palettes that I did buy in 2021 and I'm going to rank them from worst to best. I bought 10 palettes. I have a lot of different feelings about them. So let's just get into it. Number 10 on my ranking is this palette. It's actually the last palette that I bought in 2021. I bought this in October. It's the BH Cosmetics Opal for October from the Birthstone collection. This I was just kind of like hyped on because they were doing it every month the entire year and then like 10 months in I was ready for my birthstone palette. My birthday's in October. I bought this so quickly when it came out because I wanted to get it and use it in a video pretty quick that I didn't even like stop to think about it that much and if I did stop to think about it I think I would have realized that this is like a pastel palette. And we're going to talk a little bit later in this video about my experience with a different pastel palette and me kind of realizing I'm not a pastel palette person. So this, it doesn't really do much for me. Like the shadows are fine. They're not extraordinary, but they're fine. I really do like this shade though. It's like a really kind of cool peachy transition on me. And I don't know, I might later in the year try to repot this one because... I'm just not into any of the other shadows in here and with the exception of this one I haven't touched the shadows in this palette since I reviewed it in October. Number nine on my ranking is this ColourPop mini palette. This was pretty controversial when it came out because this was their neon collection that was just like neon packaging but I didn't mind that because I saw this and I'm like this looks useful. I like this hot pink in there. I like the range of neutrals. This is kind of how I like to use neutrals. I like like a, a pretty light transition and then something to deepen up that transition with and then something for my outer corner, which this delivers as well as a inner corner shade and a pop of color. So what could go wrong? But I just, I never reach for this. It just feels so cheap. And I think that's my problem with it, that like, I hate the packaging. <laughs> Every time I think of this, I think of this like translucent orangish packaging with the racing stripes on it. And I just feel like the inside looks so much nicer, but I don't know. I have been like randomly selecting palettes to use every month and I am excited to use this one. It's possible my feelings on it will change or it's possible my aversion to the packaging will prevail and that will be the reason that I don't want to keep it. It's not like I need neutrals in my collection anyway. It's just, you know, sometimes palettes come out and you're like, this could be useful even though like you don't, you're not going to use it, you know? So I guess that's how I feel about this. It just feels kind of cheap. Oh, when I said we we're gonna be talking about pastels later, I didn't mean that much later, I mean right now. Number eight on my ranking is the Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette. I love the packaging on this. I just think this is so beautiful. But I had such a roller coaster with this palette. I made so many videos on this last year, so if you're interested, I did like a first impression eye swatch video. I did a video where I did looks with this, which is kind of where my my feelings of animosity towards it were solidified. And then I also did a video where I duped it out with my collection to the best of my ability. And I'm just not a pastel person. It's possible I wouldn't have had such a negative experience if I wasn't trying to make looks with this on its own. But at the same time, most of the time that I'm pulling out a palette, I want to make a look with just that palette. So it doesn't really fit my makeup style to have a palette of just companion shades, you know? I just never end up using those. I don't know. I thought the quality of some of these was really nice. This peach is what I have on my lids right now, and I do like that peach, but I never think about using this. It just frustrates me. This I need to do a video also, like where I revisit, and maybe I'll deep pot, where like they're magnetic, so like not like a real deep potting, but maybe I'll discard some of these shades and then put in some of my other Give Me Glow shades into this palette and then kind of like make it 
its own thing that's like all mine and maybe then I would use it more but the way it is right now I'm just like I'm so not about it <laughs> I'm just so I'm so over it still number seven on my ranking is this ColourPop cancer palette this came out I think it was August or September, and there was a couple of them that intrigued me, but this one intrigued me the most. The funny thing about this palette is that the only shade that I like is this one, but I like it so much. And when I was like doing my ranking, I was like, am I really going to say that like, I like this one shade more than I like the entirety of the Pastel Dreams palette? And then I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am going to say that. So this one is... A candidate for deep potting also once I'm confident enough that I'm not just going to ruin this powder. I love, I love the shade so much. This deep brown is just like a normal matte. It doesn't really do anything for me. And then these two shimmers, I don't like. I've thought that like maybe this one would be kind of like a sheer all over the lid for like something different, like something a little bit less showy, but it's just, it just gives me nothing. It gives me nothing and then like this one also gives me nothing i have so many purples in my collection that are easily better than that so i never reach for those so like i wouldn't necessarily recommend it for the one shade but because i have it i do use that one shade and i want to keep using that one shade number six in my ranking is the ColourPop cherry crush palette we got a lot of color pop in this in this lower half this palette I used in my random palette selection in February and then I ended up decluttering all of the shimmers in it and keeping the five mattes and this palette ranked above all those other palettes for just these five mattes. These mattes are so good. These are probably the best red mattes that I have in my collection. Red mattes can so easily be like patchy or like they have too much of like a neutrality to them in a way or they blend out to be too pink. But I feel like this is just such like a nice, a nice range. There is like a more pinky one. This is like a really kind of true cherry red. This one's a little bit deeper. This one's like a little bit more like a cherry cola and this one's more like an orangey red and I love them. I'm so happy to have them. I also really like this packaging. I haven't decided like what I want to do with these. I could pop them out and just include them in my single shadows, but I might also take some of my other small depotted color pop shadows and pop them in and see if I like using that as a little palette. But yeah, not, not the best purchase because I don't like the shimmers, but not the worst purchase either. For the next three palettes, when I was, I was writing down these for my order before when I was, you know, thinking about it and planning out this video. And I didn't write these down for five, four, and three because I couldn't decide, but I'm just going to make a quick decision here. But I'm saying that so you know that these three are all pretty close to each other in their ranking. I'm going to say number five is this Sydney Grace Temptalia palette. This is the Radiant Reflection Light. This one I bought kind of on a whim, but mostly because of these two blues. I don't know what it is about them, but they just look so special and I like them a lot. I haven't used this palette that much. I did film a couple looks right when I got it that I ended up like not doing anything with. I still have those looks saved. I don't know if I'll incorporate them in the future or what, but it does like, I don't know. Something about it just speaks to me and I'm excited to use it more. I do have this blue on like kind of there a little bit, like on my inner my inner third of my lower lash line, along with some other blues that we'll talk about in a minute. I like it. I guess plain and simple. I just like it. And I guess the one that we'll say is number four is the Michaela and Glamlight palette. I did do a video about this one, but I haven't used it that much since. I think the thing with this palette, the thing that intrigued me was that I like the conjunction of like a bunch of different neutral options with a bunch of different colorful options but like in use i just haven't like figured out what i want to do with this palette yet i don't know and i think sometimes like i've had an issue with the fact that these neutral shimmers are pretty similar and like why couldn't they just have had like a really light one for my inner corner or something like that you know so i think that in a way like it kind of overwhelms me like i like big palettes but i open this up i don't know what to do with it 
it's missing like a shade that I feel like if you're going to have, what is this, like 30 shades, like you could have like a really light shimmer or at least like some kind of like iridescent shimmer, something like that. I don't know. I am excited to use it some more. It hasn't come up yet on my random palette selection rotation. And it's possible that once I spend more intentional time using it and crafting looks that I'll have a different philosophy. It is still ranked pretty high at number four. I just think that like, I haven't, like I haven't gotten my grasp on it completely yet, you know? Number three, we're going to give to the Menagerie and Annette's Makeup Corner Serenity Palette. This is their collab that came out last May. And this is what she looks like. I don't think she's available anymore, but I am happy that I have her. And I did do several videos using this. If you're curious, I did like a first impressions video and I also did a couple looks with it. My complaint with this palette is like, it's just not so much my current makeup style. I do enjoy incorporating more neutrals into my looks now than I used to. And I know this is like completely Annette's makeup style and that's cool. I like that, but it just makes me reach for it less because right now this isn't a complete palette for me. I especially really like these top three shades and I do have this shimmery blue on my inner corner right now. I love that this is included. I love shimmery blues on my inner corner more than anything. Overall, it's a really solid palette. I'm just not using it as its own thing right now. Number two is a palette that surprised me. I bought this on a whim because when the Michaela palette came out, that was the first time that I was interested in Glam Light and I started kind of like looking at their products a little bit more and this one had come out just a couple weeks before the Michaela palette and at the time I passed on it. But as I was just becoming interested in Glam Light's formula, it made me interested in this one too. So this is the Red Velvet palette and it surprised me. It's just, the colors are way more interesting than I thought they were going to be. Like I feel like all of these I mean, pretty much all of the colors are just like unusual. All of the shimmers were like more duochromatic than I expected. I did do a video using this where I compared it to the Jeffree Star Blood Sugar palette and I did a look with it and kind of fell in love from there. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend that. But yeah, really surprised by it. Every time I look at it, it just makes me happy. And my number one palette that I purchased in 2021 is going to the Menagerie, I said that weird, is going to the Menagerie Flight Club palette. This one I bought last February and I did do a couple videos on this one as well. And just as time goes on, this is just a palette that I continue thinking of fondly. I continue wanting to reach for. It's just really nice. I especially like those two lavenders up top. This one's more of like a true lavender and this one has like a little bit more blue in it. And I also really like these mattes right here. I reach for it to use in looks. I'm using a couple of the mattes today for my crease and my outer corner. I just really like it. I just really like it. I think it's like a really cute monochromatic palette that's not too monochromatic, you know? And also on top of that, I like that these Menagerie palettes are magnetic, so I have the option to pop them out and mix them into palettes if I so choose. And that was all of the palettes that I bought in 2021. That actually went by a lot quicker than I thought it would. This might be kind of a short video, but I hope that you enjoyed that. If you have a favorite palette from 2021, I would be really curious what that was. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And that's everything for today. Bye.